Let's talk about seven bad habits that can ruin your day. All right, number one, eating a breakfast. Now, I know some of you are saying, I thought that skipping breakfast was a bad habit or skipping a meal was a bad habit. Well, if you're new to my channel, you're going to find that uh, eating breakfast is, is a bad habit, especially if it's carbohydrates. But even if it's not carbohydrates, when you eat a meal, you actually stimulate hunger. So eating promotes hunger about an hour and a half later. And that is because every time you eat, you do increase insulin, regardless of what you eat. So if you're eating a carbohydrate meal, you're really going to spike that insulin. And insulin is behind this thing called hunger. Now I have to read something to you because I found this paragraph that has more lies or pieces of false information combined into one paragraph than I've ever read in anything. So here we go. In a 2011 national survey from the Calorie Control Council, they said that 17% of Americans admitted to skipping meals to lose weight. The problem is skipping meals increases your odds of obesity. Really? No, it isn't. How would skipping a meal increase you getting fat, especially when it comes to breakfast? All right. So you have to realize that's completely false. Okay. A study from the American Journal of Epidemiology found that people who cut out the morning meal were 4.5 times more likely to be obese. Wow. I'd love to see that study. I have not seen it. So in other words, if you cut out your breakfast, you're going to gain weight. Completely illogical. Why? Skipping meals slows your metabolism. This is another piece of false information. Skipping a meals does not slow your metabolism. Eating frequent meals does slow your metabolism because you're going to develop something called insulin resistance. And when you get that, you have excess amount of insulin in your blood and Insulin is the hormone that prevents you from losing weight. So why in the world would eating more food increase your metabolism? It won't. And then it goes on to say, and it boosts your hunger. Now, I will say this. If you're not adapted to fat, if you're not burning fat fuel and you haven't adapted to that, like a lot of people haven't, then skipping a meal is going to make you very, very hungry because you're running off blood sugars and you don't have a lot of it in storage. So as soon as you run out, you're going to be extremely hungry. So this paragraph really applies to those people who have not adapted to burning their own fat. And unfortunately, it's torture trying to do some weight loss program or restrict yourself when you haven't adapted to fat because in that state, you have no hunger, okay? And it's much easier to stick to something if you're not hungry or craving all day long. And all right, so then it goes on to say this, that puts your body in prime fat storage mode. So this whole idea to have these small little snacks for the day to prevent overeating is the absolute worst advice you could ever accept because you're just spiking that insulin through the day, just spiking it. And as the insulin goes up, your blood sugars go down, and you're going to be hungry and hungry and craving, and you're going to be in a torture chamber. Uh, you're not going to succeed. No one can do that for any period of time. But this theory has still survived, and it's being pushed out there, probably from the food manufacturing companies. All right, and then we have the last sentence. And don't say you don't have time for breakfast. It's easy if you make the overnight oats. All right, and here's another point. If you're going to do breakfast, the worst thing you can do is carbs. So oats are carbs you don't want to consume carbs for breakfast. So breakfast is not the most important meal of the day. I used to recommend it. I no longer recommend it. It was bad advice. If you have a breakfast with carbohydrate in the morning, chances are you're gonna be craving carbs later that night. All right, number two, drinking too much coffee. And that was me, okay? I used to drink pots of very strong coffee. And what happens is that the caffeine in the coffee um, blocks certain chemicals that help you sleep. Even if you have too much of it, your liver can't clear it out in time for you to go to sleep at night. So too much caffeine is going to keep you up at night. And guess what? You're going to be tired the next day. So I recommend just to do one small cup in the morning. Uh, you can also do coffee alternatives like Ticino, uh, like turmeric lattes, 
like matcha lattes, which have less caffeine because it's green tea, or just take a whole lemon with some water, blend it up and drink that with maybe with a little stevia or electrolytes. And I will put that video down below if you haven't seen it. All right, number three, grazing at night. Really, really bad, bad habit that you have to break. It's probably the worst habit. And so at night after dinner, you just start eating and you don't stop until you go to bed. What's happening is you're just jacking up insulin. So your ability to fast through the night is gone. You're not going to be fasting. You're not going to be in ketosis. You're not going to be burning fat. You're basically going to have this spike of insulin. And that insulin is going to then keep you from losing weight. So the next day, you're going to be bloated. And probably in the morning, you're going to be hungry. You're going to give in to temptation to eat something. So what's really happening is you're going to end up with a low blood sugar situation in the morning. It's going to affect the brain. So you're going to have brain fog. You're going to have brain fatigue. You're not going to be able to be up. You're going to have like mood issues. You might be irritable. You might have some anxiety, more stress. So what you need to do is have more fat at the last meal. Okay. And maybe as a transition step, instead of snacking on something, maybe you start with snacking on carrots and celery, okay? And do that for a while until you can give that up. But if your last meal is nutrient dense, that is going to help you. So even though you're eating a lot of food, if it's empty with nutrition, okay? Let's say you're just eating conventional foods, whether it's vegetables or not, and it's just empty, you might be full, but you're not gonna be satisfied. It's the nutrients that satisfy you. All right, the next one is too much blue light, okay, through the day. So I'm talking about too much computer work, too much cell phone, especially before you go to bed, you're getting all this blue light. Blue light blocks another type of light called infrared. And infrared is really, really important from the sun, from other things like fireplace, from candles, incandescent lights, which we don't have anymore. And so blue light prevents the creation of melatonin from the infrared light. So if you're not getting any sun during the day and you're getting all this blue light, you're gonna be deprived of melatonin and that's gonna affect your sleeping. It's gonna affect your health. You're not gonna get a rejuvenating sleep and you're gonna feel kind of sluggish the next day and you're gonna be tired. If you have not seen my video on melatonin, I will definitely put it down below. It's very important. All right, next bad habit is going out to dinner. You don't, it's a crapshoot. You don't know what you're getting. There's a lot of hidden chemicals, MSG, a lot of omega-6 oils that they put foods in. And uh, I noticed that every time I go out to dinner, even if it's a fairly decent restaurant, I do not feel good the next day. So try to not go out as often. All right, next one is shopping for groceries when you are hungry. Big mistake. You're going to buy things that you don't normally buy. So always eat before you go food shopping. And last one is just not eating enough nutrient-dense foods. When you eat food that's empty with nutrition, even though it's keto-friendly or low-carb, what happens is you always are in a state that your body's not satisfied. And so your, your tendency is to go for the wrong thing. When you really have nutrient-dense foods, man, is it easy to overcome the cravings. It's easy to stick to things. You feel better. And the pleasure of that healthy feeling um, will allow you to stick to it long term. I think the next most appropriate video for you to watch, if you haven't seen this, is my video on melatonin. Fascinating. Check it out. I put it right here.